Hello friends, greetings of the day. This is Niladri Mahapatra and today we'll talk about Scrum Board. We'll try to learn what exactly the Scrum Board is and what are the Sprint Boards. We'll have few more videos on configuring the Scrum Boards on different ALM tools in our upcoming videos. But today's our primary focus will be covering the Scrum Board, understanding what exactly it is and how we'll be able to configure it. Topics we'll be covering today is what is a scrum board and the physical board or the digital board when we prepare it or who will be preparing it and how to prepare the scrum board by making the structure of it and placing the stories using different workflows columns swim lanes what is task board storyboards and important board contents and at the same time we will uh, understand what are the story cards and task cards is and finally we will uh, use uh, the scrum board how to understand how we can use a scrum board so let's begin So the scrum board is a visual representation of committed scope of iteration or sprint and its progress. What does that mean is when you do a sprint planning, you commit couple of stories uh, for one iteration for that time particular time box and for that particular time box, you are actually committed a list of stories and how you are progressing within your sprint to give a visual representation of your progress you need to have a board where you actually having all the stories all the tasks and moving from one progress to another progress or one state to another state and that's where you can have a life of those story cards and task cards the scope of uh, your all uh, commitment is for the time box where the structure of the scrum board remains for the projects that currently having so let's understand there are two different kinds of storyboards you can have one is a digital uh, or virtual scrum board that gets generated most of the time from your ALM tool and you will able to find out okay that board is already there and based on your activity the actions you are taking on each stories or each task it gets on moving from one column to another columns uh, and that way it gives the digital representation of the current state of the your sprint. Similarly, you, if you are not using an ALM tool, then you can still have a whiteboard or a glass wall, uh, glass window or a physical wall vertically somewhere where you can uh, draw these or paste stickies to make the board. That board has to be physically uh, accessible to the all team members and visible to everyone so that we can actually um, have the benefits of the board. We'll learn more about uh, how uh, this can be generated or who generates that so let's first try to understand uh, when we will uh, prepare this board so if you look into uh, this particular picture you can see there are multiple sprints going on and it started with a sprint zero many teams uh, don't follow sprint zero if you don't do it you can have the structure created beginning of first sprint so either you can do it at sprint zero or you can do it at the beginning of the first sprint to make the structure ready so once your structure is ready you can start uh, pl placing your story cards or the task cards within your sprint so every sprint after the sprint planning you start the sprint and before you start the sprint after sprint planning you can organize all the story cards and task card within your board once your sprint is done you can remove them from your board and similarly on the next sprint you already have the board clean you committed couple of stories and tasks you just need to place them in the board run the board or sprint and at the end of the sprint you will clean that so that's way and the story board structure the scrum board structure is prepared at the beginning of the first sprint and you keep on moving the story cards and the task cards within every sprint based on whatever you have committed the structure of the story cards can be changed uh, within uh, your entire project life cycle after four sprint or five sprint you may think okay there are some improvement areas in our structure of our board we can do it so you can definitely do that but uh, i will always suggest uh, make that frequency very low try not to make the changes very fast 
or very frequently so that way it will give you a consistency of uh, the board structure throughout all the team members and uh, across all the cross-functional teams <coughs> Now who uh, prepared the scrum board? So when we talk about who prepared the scrum boards, there are uh, two areas. One is digital scrum board, one is a uh, physical scrum board. So the, in the digital scrum board, uh, when you already have experienced that once you have opened your ALM tool, you are saying, okay, after committing the sprint or starting the sprint, the board is ready. But how does that board gets ready? It's actually defined from a couple of uh, status, columns and workflows uh, relationship. And based on that, the boards generates. Who make that relationship? That depends upon uh, how your organization is structured. So on a big organization or a small organization, there is a standard created uh, by the organization uh, top end or a group of people and they work with uh, the ALM admin and get that implemented of their standards. And that implementation is inherited by the scrum team and implement this configuration. Sometimes, uh, the teams have a different nature of work or different way they do and that doesn't best fit with the organization standard so they make some tweaks on that with the help of agile coach and make their particular status and columns so there can be organization standard and ALM admin but the team may need it differently and configure it based on their particular need by inheriting the existing organization standard with the help of agile coach and make the status based on that it gets generated how this status actually uh, helping the board to be configured we'll learn that in our f uh, later few sl slide let's first try to understand in case of physical board how that gets generated so in a physical standard also uh, if it's an organization stand if there are some organization standard they implement it but uh, this is um, one board is uh, owned by one team and one team have different roles like development team the scrum master product owner and they consult with uh, each other and finalize okay based on our nature of work the way we will be doing and the best board structure will be like this they consult with their agile coach and finalize okay this is uh, how we'll be having our board this board again can be changed by the team uh, after five print or six print if they need there is uh, some changes required now uh, we'll uh, talk about how to prepare the scrum board so there uh, this area will be a little big so we'll uh, talk about two areas preparing the structure so we need to understand how this structure generates and what are the um, uh, areas that's actually impact this structure and secondly, we'll talk about uh, what are the story cards and ta task cards and how we'll be able to place those story cards and task cards within uh, this structure. So first try to understand the workflows. So if we actually talk about workflow, there can be many workflows. You need to choose one out of them. Your uh, board's workflow can be one workflow or if you have one board can have one workflow. So one project can have multiple boards where you can actually have multiple uh, workflows to uh, vis uh, show your uh, states. So let's assume uh, there are one uh, workflow to do in progress done. There is one workflow to do dev in progress, test in progress, verification in progress, accepted. And so like there can be many other workflows. For the uh, purpose of this video, I am actually taking this uh, second workflow to going forward and let's see uh, how this workflow is actually mapped with the columns so if this is your workflow and we needs to make some columns uh, we needs to have some columns like to do in progress that is dev in progress test in progress verification in progress and done so even if you see the text of these columns and the workflow states um, is same uh, but those are two different entities to make you understand and uh, understand the mapping between status and task uh, Sorry status and columns. I have give the name same so that you can understand it better But those are two different entities. So once you think okay for the columns we need uh, to identify these can be our different columns your each story or each task can have one states of these these are the workflow states so that uh, each story can have workflow states and based on that workflow state it is uh, 
you need to decide which column it's that state should be visible to so if i say the backlog if a story have a backlog states it will be in to do if a story have a dev in progress it will be visible here if a story have a test in progress it will be visible here so similarly uh, based on the state of the story where it will be mapping so you need to configure this mapping so mapping with the status and a column that we need to do once you are done with that your stories will be automatically visible in a lm tool or you need to move it manually in your uh, physical board now uh, it's not necessary that your uh, each column and each state has to have a one to one mapping so you can have a mapping like this where in the, the column name is in progress where any stories it is in dev in progress or test in progress can be visible here so that way you actually decide how you'll be map uh, configure your mapping of states and columns and what are the columns you need and that's where it will be done now we'll talk about a swim lens once we know okay these columns have some states this column have some states mapped with that and the story cards will be visible uh, based on the states of the story in particular column but you can still have a categorization of all these stories where it will be visible that categorization is a horizontal uh, categorization that we call a swim lens in swim lens you can have the categories like epics so over here if i have uh, three epics all these stories under epic one can be go into this lens all the stories uh, of uh, this particular epic bus2 will go under these columns and so for for all the categories so you can have uh, the categories map based on epics you can have categorization based on stories where if uh, in this particular case one story can have multiple task and each task can move within their workflow so uh, one story can have four or five or six tasks each task can go and you can see what exactly the task is happening we'll learn that uh, more in details in the later slide you can have your uh, swim lens based on the priority where you can have high low medium or any other categories of priority you have and you move your uh, task card or story cards within these columns accordingly now uh, we uh, like to understand what exactly the difference between a story card and a uh, story board and a task board so if you look into this particular uh, image this is the typical states of a workflow of a story and these are the columns so where we have different stories based on their uh, workflow states they are visible in different columns and we have analysis dev in progress test in progress completed so it gives you an idea where exactly the story is there in case of a task board we have the workflow of a task is to do in progress is done so what does that mean is a task of testing task cannot be go into dev in progress or a development task cannot go into test in progress or a verification task cannot go into analysis or dev in progress so that way it will not uh, if you are actually working on a uh, task board it's uh, better to have a um, workflow like to do in progress and done where you can have the testing verification development analysis where it was earlier in the task board was a part of the states of workflow and as a column here we are having it's a task and everything is go to in progress and done and in that way it will give a details visibility of what exactly the real state is for an example if uh, for one particular user story one team member is working on test case creation and another uh, team member is working on development it will not give a real picture on a storyboard what exactly happening but in a task board you can actually get to see okay the analysis is done the development is in progress and test case creation is in progress so that way it gives you a more details view and in task board you always try to make the swim lens on the story level so that you can say okay this task are belong to this story this task are belong belong to this story you can still change the board uh, you can still change the story states based on the change of this story state it will be visible on another board if you can have multiple boards for one project and uh, based on that you can show two different boards to two different target audience one can be having a business user or the stakeholders they want to see in the story levels they can still see in this board based on this so on the alm board you can have two board in physical board there too much of manual work so that's why i'll say manage only one board otherwise it will be too much of work for managing the boards 
okay so this is how the task uh, storyboard and task boards is different now uh, we'll talk about few other components those are very important for uh, uh, having a board uh, so first thing is if this is your board we can have one uh, sprint name because every board once we start uh, putting our um, uh, card components uh, or our story card task cards that is targeting to one sprint so we need to have which sprint these cards belongs to then we used to have a sprint days remaining so what how many days remaining on the sprints in a physical board you need to change this number every day by seven six five four three two one and an uh, lm tools it take cares for you another component we can have a sprint goal as you remember at the time of sprint planning one of the outcome was sprint goal and we are doing some construction or development to meet that goal so it's a good idea to have the sprint goal visible along with your uh, board in few lm tools supports that to show the sprint goal few lm tool uh, tool uh, doesn't show that directly on your um, board area but this is a good idea to have it on a physical board so that you can actually target uh, or have the visibility of your target what you are developing for and there is burn down chart all the lm tools uh, shows that a link or a burn down chart where you can click and get a better view of uh, burn down in a lm to uh, in a physical board you need to do that manually the scrum master captures the data of every day's uh, work and uh, plot the burn down chart in excel and somewhere and put it into the board so this gives a better view of how we are progressing are we on risk or we are uh, doing too aggressive that we can give a better feeling of how our progress is another area is definition of done when all your task cards is uh, mainly the story is moving it to done you need to review your uh, definition of done once uh, that story meets all the definition of done the product owner finally accept the stories so that is also a good idea if you have a definition of done visible because most of the time in my experience we define the definition of done and it's gone uh, stored in some hard disk space and it's never talked about so it's a better good habit to have the definition of done in front of you so that you can keep it matured and in a practice of following that the another area is core hour uh, area so the core hour discussion area so now um, this area is for if you are actually having a daily scrum call and that's taking more than 15 minutes of time your uh, goal is to complete in 15 minutes time that's happened because of there are some uh, technical discussion though those are very important discussion but uh, those are should not be part of a daily scrum call and uh, at the time of daily scrum call we like to park that kind of discussion in our core area discussion so after the daily scrum call we'll uh, we'll ask uh, the interested parties who want to talk about that core hour discussion complete the discussion and once it is done we'll move it so the core hour discussion is normally uh, you can implement it in your physical board in your alm tool there is nothing like uh, mark a note for core hour discussion so you can put it uh, write it down on pen and paper somewhere and then later after scrum call you can discuss it but here uh, in core hour discussion you can put something that you want to talk about and keep that until the discussion is not completed once it is done you can clean it and then uh, that area will be again blank so this is how uh, your scrum board will be looks like in a physical board and most of the components in your lm tool may be provided with a link or a small icon somewhere that way it's not visible in one board in lm tool their primary focus is to give a maximum screen space to visualize the board so this is how uh, we'll be preparing the board now we'll try to understand uh, when we'll be moving our uh, story cards and task cards within our board how that will be happen to understand that uh, let's first try to understand what is a story card is so story card is typically looks like this rectangular box and in this rectangular box you can see there are some details there we'll try to understand what are those so we have a story card so it shows what the story id is we have a story title we have a parent if the story is under any epics any features it represent that it have a story point what is the estimated story point the relative sizing here and we used to have a owner this card doesn't have a owner here but you still can have a owner who will be the primary responsible for uh, demonstrating that story 
who will be primarily responsible for one time uh, point of contact from the business side to understand that so there can be different natures of stories you will be working so it's a bit good habit to have a um, owner there and the estimated task effort so this estimated task effort is not directly entered for a story this is a cumulative uh, count of the remaining hours for all the child tasks so uh, instead of task estimated effort hours it's, uh, it shows uh, the remaining hours for that story that gives a better representation of how many hours or the amount of effort works remains for this particular story the story doesn't uh, have or should not have a direct effort hours if you want to have uh, effort hours uh, that has to be come to a task many teams don't use task in that case you can have the hours for effort that you will be putting but don't mix up with this estimated hours and uh, the story point those are two different components now we'll uh, see uh, how we can get uh, this task uh, story card generated in your ALM tool it generates for you automatically based on uh, whatever the views or uh, components you want to see in uh, story card but in manually you can generate it from excel so this is a uh, example of excel generated story card where i have this kind of story cards and i used to print it out cut it down and put it in our, my physical board i'll show you quickly the excel that i am using uh, i have prepared it for only a the team those use only physical board this is a uh, excel where i have list of all the stories that i have committed and at the time of printing i have uh, this board where it generates from that data i take a printout and cut it down okay so uh, there are a few example of different alm tools uh, story card how that looks like so each uh, this is a story card from jira this is a story card from rally and this is a story card of TFS. So each have all the components that we talk about ID assigned to story title, parent, story point, and then whom it is assigned to and uh, story level estimation. So if you are actually doing, uh, you are not doing any tasking, you are having a story level estimation, you can do it and uh, how many days remaining hours for all the subtasks. So that way, you, so this is a Jira, you can have a similar kind of thing in Rally, you can have similar or for all uh, ALM tool. And this is again configurable, you can actually configure what you want to what components you want to see on your card. And based on that, it will be represent. Now we'll talk, uh, we'll uh, talk about something uh, called uh, task cards. So for a uh, task cards, there are a couple of components that we want to learn. So one is a parent, definitely that will be a story and a task ID, a task name, example, development, code review, test case creation, etc. And assign to whom you are assigning it to, who will be executing that task and estimated effort hours for that task and remaining effort hours of task. So we'll talk about those are two different things. Estimated effort hours comes at the very beginning of the creation of the task and the remaining effort hours keep on changing every day as on when they are uh, executing the task and uh, marking the remaining hours. So a typical uh, view of a task card, this is a physical task card that I generate for a physical board uh, within Excel. So where I have all this imp information of story ID, task ID, then uh, whom it is assigned to, what is the estimated uh, task estimation. And uh, that way you actually uh, update the task information. This block for a physical board, this is actually for updating the everyday task remaining hours so that uh, if you are doing it manually, you can have an Excel where uh, uh, you can j update all these logs. And based on that logs, you can generate the burn down. In an ALM tool, when and as and when you update uh, the remaining hours, it keeps the uh, logs internally and give you the burn down chart. But if you are doing it manually, you need to keep a track of something how. And again, over here, you can actually see if one task uh, remaining hours is constant, uh, same for all the dates. At, the, uh, at this date, you can realize, okay, this task is not actually improving. No one is working on this. So that way, it's give a better opportunity to uh, track down what exactly happening. This is a um, uh, task card of ALM tool where we have a story ID as a parent and these are one task, two task and third task. So that way you can have multiple tasks under one story and each task have all the components that we have. So 
task card story cards we understood what it is now let's see how you will be able to generate this uh, task card in excel i will go quickly to the excel so here uh, i have list of all the task with the assigned what story it belongs to and uh, it's generate a task card for me i will just uh, take a print out of this and cut it paste in my physical board for the duration of the sprint and this uh, uh, card can move from one uh, columns to another column based on uh, the status is changing now there these are the uh, sample tasks uh, that we have uh, from different alm uh, so this is from jira this is from rally this is from store uh, tfs all of them are having uh, the columns uh, or the components that we are talking about are visible here now uh, placing story cards or task cards so uh, once you place the story cards and task card it will be look like this these are the story cards these are the task card these are the components named days remaining definition of done burn down sprint goal and the core hour discussion area so that's how it looks like in a physical board but uh, if you want to see a task physical board it will be looked like something this where you have all the columns here and you have the stories moving from left to right and that's where it looks like in a physical board for alm tool uh, this is a sample jira task board organized by story this one is a sample task board within rally and this is also organized by story and it have uh, the task board used to have this much of column so if uh, in alm you can see the story is here and all the task is here then again another story and the tasks are there now uh, this is a rally storyboards where we have different sets of workflow columns and these are the different stories moving from uh, left to right this is a sample tfs task board where we have the stories categorized and here we have the different uh, task boards uh, those are arranged uh, for this particular story within this stream lane and these are the columns we have so these are a different sample of uh, storyboards or the task boards that we can have in ALM tool or in a physical board. Now uh, we need to understand how uh, to use the scrum board. So once we have our scrum board, so this uh, at the very beginning, all the task card you are seeing in progress, it will be in first column. And from that day onward, it will be going uh, from left to right from each states. We first need to understand the few areas. So first we talk about updating the remaining hours. So every day we need to update the remaining hours. So here for ALM tool that gets updated based on uh, your uh, manual updation of the remaining hours or logging hours, what tool you are using. And uh, for a physical board, you need to change this area every day. So you are making changes over here one day, next you will be making changes here, then you will be making changes here and that way you will be updating the remaining hours that we need to work on every day so that it gives you a better up, um, progress update how many works is remaining. Secondly, we can have a uh, we can move uh, the cards from one columns to another columns based on every day's need so in alm tool uh, it can give you the provisions to drag and drop from one columns in physical board you need to manually uh, pick the card from one board and uh, put it into another board these are uh, for uh, this video i just uh, given this uh, picture of what is sticky notes you can use your sticky notes or your printout whatever you feels good that way you can move it the next uh, action we'll be doing is reassign the team members so sometimes during realization we found okay this team members is overloaded or not able to work uh, do this work or this member have some issues this member has went for leave so for any reason we can change the task cards uh, assignee so that we can uh, get uh, the real time update and progress and improvement to smoothly complete the sprint the next area we can uh, do is a mark as impediments so here you can see uh, if any time the task or story is impeded we will be put it in uh, put a red sticky uh, on top of it in a physical board or in alm tool it uh, most of the alm tools have options to mark a story as blocked and give you an options to um, uh, enter the block reason and we'll keep that block reason until it's not get resolved so uh, that shows in a board okay this story is currently blocked and every day 
someone needs to give attention to understand how we can able to resolve that block we need to assign someone uh, who is resolving the block primarily a scrum master or anyone else can do that now once you have marked the impediments uh, then uh, it's visible in the board and then you are um, uh, primarily done with the major works that you need to do in your uh, scrum board there are few areas you need to work on uh, most of them are automatically done by your um, ALM tool but in a physical board you need to do it for an in a ALM tool uh, those are done by automatically but for uh, uh, your, your board um, your physical board you need to do it manually for an example that is days remaining we need to update it every day ALM tool does that for you automatically burn down chart we need to plot that manually and uh, save it uh, print it and post it in a physical board ALM tool will generate uh, it automatically based on the remaining hours updates that you are updating in your ALM tool core hour discussion this is primarily for a physical board what you updates uh, you need to update it here and then clean it once the discussion is done mark story state you need to change the story state uh, if that is a manual state you need to move the story to done once all the tasks are done or in a um, board lm tools if you are using a task uh, you are working on a task board you can still change the story status to appear it in a storyboard so that the senior management or uh, any business owner can view on a story level as they are least interested on the task level execution states and once you are done with your sprint you need to clean up that board so that it's get ready for the next sprint yeah that's all from my side uh, thank you for watching i'll come up with few more videos on the practical implementation and configuration in alm tool like jira rally or tfs till that time have a wonderful day bye bye and don't forget to subscribe thanks <laughs>